Back at WWDC, Apple announced the largest iOS update ever, iOS 8, and earlier today it went live to the public. So what does it entail? I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and here is our iOS 8 hands-on. Back in June, Apple announced its latest version of iOS, iOS 8. We quickly downloaded the developer preview and gave you an in-depth hands-on, showing all the new features, what changed, and what didn't. Now iOS 8 has gone through several beta stages, hit the Goldmaster release, and now, just two days before iPhone 6 day, has been officially released to the public. We're going hands-on once more to see what the official update is all about, to see how it's improved and to explore all the features that weren't live before. The very first thing I noticed that has changed since Beta 1 is the appearance of Control Center. Its appearance has been even further flattened, it's cleaner, and it's brighter than before. That, as well as some other visual changes, were introduced throughout the various beta releases, such as a toggle for predictive text suggestions in the keyboard settings, the Tips app, and a few other odds and ends. In other words, the UI has barely changed at all since Beta 1, and also since iOS 7. The brunt of the changes are behind the scenes, but that doesn't mean they're small, meaningless features. Quite the contrary. Possibly one of the biggest updates is for soft keyboards. Apple updated its own iOS keyboard with intelligent predictive text. Not only will it learn the way you type over time, it will learn how you talk with different people as well. It's sort of contextually aware and it adapts to you. But if you don't like the stock keyboard, iOS 8 brings a long desired ability to install third party keyboards. And that's finally live today for the public. Popular Android keyboards like Swipe, Minium, and Flexi are already available, and SwiftKey should be available later today, hopefully by the time this video is uploaded. Simply head over to the keyboard settings, select Add New Keyboard, and choose any third-party keyboards you have installed. When typing, tap the globe to switch between all activated keyboards. This update was huge for third-party developers, not only for keyboard options, but for sharing as well. This was a feature we discussed in our first hands-on video, but it wasn't live yet. Now, from within any application which uses the native iOS sharing menu, you can share to any third-party applications that support sharing. For instance, you can save articles directly to Pocket or Evernote straight from Safari. This is a huge step forward for the platform and users alike. Thanks to the extensibility APIs, third-party widgets can now be added to the Today View and Notification Center as well. Simply pull down the shade, scroll to the bottom, and tap Edit. Any third-party apps with widgets can easily be added and rearranged. I've added Yahoo Weather, Evernote, and Day One widgets. We're sure more will begin to pop up over the coming weeks and months. In Notification Center, items can quickly be deleted individually by swiping them to the left. You can also swipe messages and emails to the left to reply instantly without leaving the app you're in, or you can pull down on a banner notification to do the same. These are what Apple calls actionable notifications. Continuity was also one of the cooler features announced at WWDC. Start typing a message on your phone and finish it from the iPad. This aptly named handoff feature is baked into this release of iOS 8, but it's not fully functioning and it won't be until Yosemite is released for Mac. So no SMS on the iPad until October. Spotlight and Siri also have new tricks up their sleeve. Both are powered by Bing and Spotlight will now provide cards of information when you begin to type, like nearby events, movies playing, Wikipedia articles, etc. And Siri can now provide song information using Shazam's music recognition service, and it can be activated hands-free from standby using the Hey Siri command, so long as your iOS device is plugged in and charging. The last major iOS 8 feature we're going to cover here is a built-in photo editor in the Photos app. It comes with several different filters and options to tweak your photos. It takes a lot from iPhoto and it reminds us a little bit of Snapseed. We'll just say we're mighty impressed with how powerful this editor is while remaining pretty lightweight. Other great features can be found throughout iOS 8. It's a huge update that brings a ton of much needed change and improvements to an operating system that was otherwise growing very long in the tooth. Things like battery usage by app, third party touch ID support, health kit, family sharing, and the shortcut to favorite and recent contacts in the recent apps menu are all welcome changes. We just can't wait to try out these new features on bigger hardware. Everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, be sure to help us out and let us know by clicking the thumbs up button below and subscribing to the channel. You can find us around the web on Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus at Pocket Now. I'm Taylor Martin, Casper Tech on Twitter, and I will see you next time.